people, there are three lower chakras. You have the root chakra, the sacral chakra, and the solar plexus. I want a good big dragon. So it's giving no walls. I don't know what's going on with the youth. Destroying their body, tearing their body up. Like the that. root chakra is essentially the framework of a house, right? The cement slab of which the constructs, uh, the constructs form, beams, the wood, the support. Again, the framework. This talks about the essential needs that every human being has. Every human being. I mean, shelter. I mean, food. I mean, water. I mean, family. I mean, community, social life. The things that, as a human being, you cannot live without. Not your ego, because when we talk about ego, ego has personalized needs so ego might be your introvert so you have the needs of an introvert that's that's specific to you root chakra is all across the board so then we talk about the sacral chakra the sacral chakra is your emotional body this is the womb everybody has a womb this is where everybody creates from this is the center of desires of emotions this is where the water flows our ability to connect with others this is basically how we feel our emotional framework and then we move up to the solar plexus which is our ego which is underwork which in other words is our identity our sense of self so in this world god is comprised of a many number of things right so god is good god is bad god is just god is unjust the god ego says hmm out of all of this vastness, I want to be these select things. I want to be shy. I want to have this level of integrity. The ego is what makes you unique, right? So out of this endless sea of potential, your ego says, this is what I'm going to be. The beautiful thing about the chakras is that they all work together. So if your root chakra, which is your essential needs, are not met, then that means your sacral chakra, which is your desires, your emotions, are going to suffer. Your identity is also going to suffer. Your solar plexus is also the seat of personal power. This is also how you take action, how you show up in the world, how you go after the things that you want, right? So let's say your essential needs are not met. You experience extreme poverty. Now you don't feel secure. You're going to feel very disoriented. Um, you're going to go into survival mode. You're going to go in trauma response. Because again, this is the basics. This is like basic human survival. And that's the reason why a lot of people live in the uh, root chakra. They live in survival mode. Because that's what the root chakra entails. So now, when we go to the sacral, which is your emotions, your water, your flow, your energy, you're going to be anxious. You may struggle with holding on to things, not being able to let things go. You may feel like you got to work really hard in order to get stuff. Or you may have imposter syndrome. This is where all of those emotional isms comes in at. Perfectionism, people pleasing, all of those kind of things. The emotional story, right? How I feel about life. And then that, in turn, coincides with your ego. So now you build an ego and in an identity around those feelings those emotions those experiences ego is gonna say the old story is now my present story and thus my future story but what i've come to understand is that i am not going to ascend in life playing the game the way it was made because a lot of spiritual teachings tell you about one thing and this thing and that thing and that thing and this thing and all this other kind of stuff, but seldom do they ever bring it together. And that's what I'm about to do. We, as we know, are divine beings that are having a human experience. And even this human experience is a divine one. But the problem is so much of it is mitigated by principalities and darknesses in high places. Root chakra, you want abundance, right? You want to feel like your needs are taken care of. You want to feel like you're getting money. You, you, you want to feel like you can survive in life and that you're at ease, right? You don't want to be on a hamster wheel, constantly having to work this job and that job and this job, and you got to grind it out. Motherfuckers tell you, oh yeah, I, I, I'm in my hustle mode. I, I hustle, I hustle. Do you know what it means to hustle? Hustle culture puts you in anxiety You because you got to grind. You always thinking about where your next dollar going to come from. You always thinking about what you got to do in order to keep a relationship. And this also talks about the masculine and the feminine. So for me, growing up in life, I was always in my masculine, meaning I was always logically trying to figure out how I was going to solve things, how I was going to keep people in my life, how I was going to maintain my relationships, how I was going to live up to my standards. So as a result, it made me very anxious and fearful about losing people, places and things. It put me in a perfectionist mindset because I always felt like everything that I was was something that I had to live up to. And the same applied for my life in terms of financial success. Oh, I got to 
grind at this job. I got to hustle here because if I don't work, if I don't do what I need to do, then I'm not going to I'm not going to eat. I ain't going to make no money. Hamster on the wheel. Hamster on the wheel. Hamster. I don't care what nobody say. This world is really ruled by darkness. There is an outstanding attempt to captivate the spiritual essence of God, which is every single one of us and put us into servitude. And the day I was thinking to myself, I want a house. I do. I immediately got anxiety when the concept of upkeep came up into my mind. Because in life, you don't just buy a house. You pay on a house. You don't just buy the car. You got to get gas. You got to get maintenance. You got to get... Everything takes upkeep. So in order to upkeep, you have to have the wherewithal. And where the fuck we gonna get that? Maybe I might just be a nomad, girl. <laughs> Maybe I might just live a simple life. You know what I mean? You know, like, it, femininity is faith. Fe femininity is emotion. Femininity is creativity, right? And if you know anything about creativity, you don't work with cre being creative. Creative is just something that just happens. The divine feminine is not something that can be quantified, described, or put in a box. It just is. I, I think of the universe in many ways as a divine feminine being because imagine something that has no end that goes as far as the eye can see. If you believe you can only get money by working hard, that means you forever gonna have to work hard. And that means you're gonna do a lot of hard work. The way that providence or the divine feminine is presented to us oftentimes is incorrect. I was told that a divine being that sits on a throne in the sky is going to take care of me, which is essentially no different than capitalism. It's another form of servitude. It's another form of worship. So now I believe that I have to be perfect because if I fall susceptible to sin, I'm not going to be taken care of. I ain't going to get my resources. So I'm wondering, I'm weathering through life and I'm trying to figure out I'm praying and I'm grateful and I'm all of these things, but I'm not protected. I don't feel abundant. I don't feel taken care of. I'm seeing all of this egregious darkness around me. So I'm losing faith. But one of the reasons why the machine that I believed in didn't work, because yeah, I had the faith, but I also had the fear because the concept of God was proposed to me out of fear. It didn't come from a place of love. It didn't come from a feeling of acceptance. It came out of fear mongering to not go to a certain place in the afterlife. Even the entire experience more revolved around the enemy than it is the goodness of this being. I got to make my own system because as long as I subscribe to whatever is going on in the world, I'm not going to be happy. I'm not going to make it. And that subscription looks like different things. That subscription could look like beauty standards. That subscription could look like perfectionism. That's, that could look like being forced to dress a certain type of way. Because see, we think abstract. We don't think everyday nuance. Oh, well, I actually can't say that in this room. Or I can't walk this way or dress this way or act this way. Oh, well, in order for me to receive certain respect, I need to dress like this. Always thinking that we got to do in order to get. But the thing about it is, we never get it. And if we do get it, we're now stressed out. Because we, we, we trying to rack our brains on a million ways to maintain what we've gotten. Because it was never received from a place of abundance, but rather out of scarcity. This is how we about to run a game. There are three people in this world. This is my favorite thing that I think. There are people that are controlled. There are people that are restricted. And there are those that dominate. And in order to be somebody who dominates the world, that means you have to tell reality what reality is. I don't let situations tell me how they are going to go in my life. I tell situations how they're going to go. I have no other option. I don't. Believing in lack, struggle, fear, none of that stuff, it, it, none of those, I'm never going to win in those concepts. Capitalism ain't never going to sa save me. Thinking about them jobs ain't never, none of that stuff. Even the things that people propose upon me because of me being or how I talk or how I act or whatever, that don't even have nothing to do with me. Does that mean that because you don't accept the pickle juice that you're gonna have an easy experience? No. Sometimes there's this naive belief that when you have certain beliefs or when you stand on certain principles, your life is just gonna change and everything gonna be perfect and holy and amazing. Baby, you gonna go through things no matter what. You gonna always have some, you always gonna traverse an experience. But you in life, you get to choose which one you gonna, how you wanna go through this? Do you want to be hated for being yourself 
or do you want to be liked for living a lie? Th- think about it like this. If me believing that I'm not worthy of love puts me in the hands of abusers, I'm already at the bottom. What could I possibly lose by having faith that it's going to work out with what I want? Because it's only going to be a win-win. I can't lose nothing in that. You really don't have that many options. You're going to either believe in the world or you're going to believe in you. I can't control how people feel about me, which is comprised of their identity, their ego, their environment, where they can. That's all them. From survival mode, being stuck in survival mode, being stuck in the root chakra. That's the reason why people fall into the things they fall into. They fall into addictions. Uh, they fall into lust. Um, they fall into substance abuse. They fall into all of these different things because they need something to cope, something to make them feel better about themselves. So that's been a very big thing for me. Shifting those feelings, taking my emotions back and asking myself, well, how do I feel? How do I want to feel? What do I want to impress? Can the people name something that you would feel shame about? I felt shame about unrequited love, someone pursuing me and then not caring. Shame is a direct infringement upon survival, upon one's ability to access the abundance that is latent. Because whenever you feel shame, you feel ostracized. You feel out of the fray, out of the group, outside of love, outside of community, outside of connection, outside of everything that you essentially need in order to be. And it becomes a hindrance. It becomes something that locks you up, holds you down and keeps you captive. Even if you logically know better, because that's a deep, deep seated belief, right? Now, the concept of being overweight is a hard one because it's not something that's just personal. It's not just a, oh, well, I don't love myself or I have a certain view about myself. Sometimes that can be the thing. But on top of that, it's a systemic disdain. You know how many people have said, hey, when I was on the heavier side, people disrespected me and treated me weird, treated me as though I wasn't beautiful, overlooked me, always made me the fun girl or the fun boy, didn't see me as a love interest, all of these different things. So it's a societal norm, which makes it even more difficult. Because even if you possess that level of love for yourself, the question kind of becomes, okay, well, how do I navigate the world feeling this way about me? The only way to overcome something like that is to unlock yourself or to unhinge yourself from what the world is saying about you. All of these beliefs, all of these social constructs, are just that things that man has agreed upon they ain't real it is real because people believe in them even if the world agrees upon, upon upon them if you believe in it and you continue to let that be the governing thing in your life in your mind your body your, your soul your experience you will never know peace you will never know happiness even when you lose the weight it's still gonna be something that could potentially be in your mind because it's a psychological thing you get to decide what has access to you and what does not. So first and foremost, you are worthy of love. You are worthy of commitment. You are worthy of community. You are worthy of everything that is yours and more. You are worthy of feeling secure in your body, in the moment. People's disdain for you, that is their job. That's their work. That's their ignorance. That don't got nothing to do with you. And even when they project that upon you, you have the power to say, mm mm. I don't accept that because also a lot of times we get involved in our struggles and they become real to us because they are real to us. But when you step out of it and look at it from an overview, everybody got a struggle. Some people struggle because they trans. Some people struggle because they gay. Some people struggle because they got weight because of the color of their skin because of how much money they do or do not have because of where they come from. Everybody has something. So it's never just us. A lot of times we feel like, oh my God, the world is bearing down just on me. Oh, it's just, it's the world is all against me. The enemy comes in the form of social constructs, narratives and norms to tell you what you are and what you're not, you're not to keep you low. Because if the enemy can keep you low, it can keep you away from everything that is yours. For the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Now, if you inevitably decide that you want to change your way, go here, go there, whatever the case, that's fine. But your value does not change. You will always be valuable and worthy. I definitely advise everybody to look up 
the chakras with Tia Swan. She did a great job to look up root chakra, sacral chakra, and solar plexus so that you can go do a deeper dive on these things. But at your root, all of the essential needs and all of the essentials you, you, you need that you are worthy of, those things will come to you. Oftentimes, too, there can be a fear of how will I find love or how will I find jobs? How will I find the things that I need? Because society tells me that I'm not worthy and will keep me away from getting these things. Don't believe that. You are worthy. And there are an endless amount of people that are dying to get to know you. It is not something that you got to work for. It's not something that you got to be perfect for. It's just there. Now, when we move up to our sacred chakra, our emotions, what are the ways that you feel about yourself? What are some emotional stories that you have? Like when you see yourself in the mirror, when you are going on dates, um, when you come into the room, when you come into a, a certain spaces, how are you feeling about yourself? Now, in those spaces, do not allow, first of all, detach yourself. Detach yourself from this matrix, from these stories that are told on the outside, because you got to understand if you allow people to feed you, you also allow them to starve you. At no point in time should you ever feel unworthy. Should you ever feel anxious or afraid or fearful? You are secure. You are stable. You feel confident. You feel sexy. You feel hot because other people's dislike for you is none of your concern because you are completely and totally in love with you understand that people who believe those type of things oftentimes are under the control of demonic entities themselves and don't think for themselves they're not your target audience the the, the whole world is not meant for you it's a specific thing that's just for you so understand rejection is your biggest protection when people don't like you when they treat you weird when they act crazy that doesn't say anything about you. Do not internalize it. If you take it personal, you will personify it and it will destroy you from the outside in, inside out. Do not do that. Now that goes up to our ego. We're talking solar plexus. What are your stories about yourself? What is your identity? What do you believe? What's your integrities? What's your morals? What's your values around you? See, it's not what people call you. It's what you answer to. What do you answer to? That's your ego. Your ego is what you answer to and you stand on that. For the Bible says, so as a man think of, so is he. And if you stand in faith, it shall be given unto you. And this is where standing on conviction, believing this is mine, because you have no choice. You don't get to choose whether or not you believe. A lot of times I felt shame around my identity, especially being a queer boy. But um, how would I? OK, because let's go through this. So I feel shame. I feel anxiousness and I feel fear. The reason why is not because I don't love myself, not because I don't feel that I'm worthy. No, I think that I'm worthy. I think that I'm amazing. But I know the world says otherwise. So when I come into the room, I'm afraid that I might be discriminated against, mistreated, harmed, abused. And I'm all, I'm even more afraid because I know that if these things happen to me, nobody's going to care because they're going to justify their mistreatment because, oh, well, he so yeah it don't matter i now immediately feel a level of despondency and i'm sitting in that and because i'm sitting in it now i'm stuck because i ain't got nowhere to go i can't go nowhere with that so now every room that i go in i'm 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 think i'm overthinking about the reactions of what people gonna say and what they're gonna do i'm in my nervous system i'm i'm on i'm on edge so all i gotta do is go to three areas my root my sacral my solar first of all people don't get to choose how they treat me i am not open to the entire world like the world is not pouring itself into me i'm not worried about what everybody's feeling how they think about me and, and all of these different things like i'm grown i'm not a kid you know what i mean i'm not no bitch I, baby i pay my own bills i take care of me i love on me i stand on big business bitch ain't nobody coming through doing nothing for me baby it's me that's doing all of these things so i, I they, these people don't have that much power to make me feel up no way about nothing actually i feel a level of peace i feel a level of love and joy for myself because i understand that i am worthy of love that i am divine and that i am special just the way that i am there is a deep-seated belief that because i am the way that i am that there is something that maybe god don't like this or this that, and the third or this is not the will of the creator or this is the natural all the, all the, all the, all the other kind of stuff i rebuke that and i take myself away from that because i understand that is a narrative propagated by principalities to control me and to make me feel less than 
because I understand by research that two spirited people and queer people have existed since the beginning of time and have been very pivotal, pivotal in spiritual practices. So therefore, I also understand me being authentic and being myself is the most divine and holiest thing that I can do. I am worthy to be myself because if I do anything else, I am upholding a system. And when the younger generation looks at me and when they see me going out with my hair, going out doing my thing, it is going to inspire them and encourage them to be themselves. So they will never have to feel the way that I feel. I feel secure. I feel stable. I feel comfortable in who I am because I know I have a right to be and a right to exist. Now, when it comes down to my emotions around my desires and the things that I want, I am comfortable holding hands with my partner because I understand I'm just like anybody else. I'm comfortable with, with PDA. I'm comfortable with, with pursuing actual love interests. I don't have low self-esteem. I don't feel like I got to fight for love. I don't feel like I got to use my body. No, 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 I don't feel none of that. And I don't believe that story either. I think that I'm a bad bitch. In fact, I know it. My love languages are words of affirmation and I'm a Leo. So my biggest love language is worship. So I must. <laughs> yes. So I get worshiped down. Your emotions are always going to let you know where you where you are and use those feelings to bring you back where you want to be. I rebuke every stronghold. I cast every stronghold down. I speak that in, in this season and forevermore that you will feel and know that you are taken care of. I speak into this season, divine providence, that everywhere you turn, there will be suppliance for your every need, want, and desire. In this season, I speak forever now and more abundance in your life. You reside in the land of milk and honey, in the land of plenty. You don't live just to get your needs met, but your desires as well. You are able to travel. We are able to travel as we seek and as we want. We are able to go wherever we choose. We are able to live the fullness of our life for we are worthy of everything that we see. I bind the hand of every enemy. I bind the tongue of every force that comes up against us and I send them back, back from whence they have came. For we are blessed at the crown of our head down to the soles of our feet and everything that we touch, everything that we engage upon is blessed. It increases and it does well by our mere presence. We are surrounded by people, places, and things that appreciate us. We are surrounded by awe, for we are awe-inspiring. We see only the goodness of the Lord. We only see the goodness of ourselves, the amazement. I speak the fulfillment of every promise that has been made over your life. I rebuke and break any and all generational curses societal norms that do not serve you oh why because a bitch just sent me 20 dollars on cash app let me gag you hoes real quick my motherfucking tank is at 16 miles right now you know what i said to myself i ain't worried about it because i know that god gonna take care